today we will discuss about the anatomy of the stomach. Part 1. First of all, we will make a diagram. This is pubic bone, this is pubic tubercle, pubic symphysis, pubic tubercle. Here is position of anterior superior iliac spine. This is anterior superior iliac spine. This position of diaphragm. This is diaphragm. This is costal margin. This is pubic bone. This is pubic tubercle. This is pubic tubercle. This is anterior superior iliac spine. And here is inguinal ligament. This is inguinal ligament. This is inguinal ligament. So this is abdominal cavity. Abdominal cavity is divided into nine regions by two vertical and two horizontal lines. Two horizontal lines are one line passes at the level of tip of ninth costal cartilage. This is level of tip of ninth costal cartilage. And here is this is This is L1 vertebra. This is L1 vertebra. So this line is transparently lined. Passes through lower part of the L1 vertebra. And here it crosses tip of ninth costal cartilage. This line is transpyloid line. A transpyloric plane and the horizontal line. Here is anterior superior iliac spine. Just posterior to this, this is tubercle. This is tubercle of the iliac crest. This is tubercle of the iliac crest. And the line passes from the tubercle of the iliac crest. This is, this line is so this line is trans tubercular plane. This is tubercle of the iliac crest. It connects the tubercle of the iliac crest. And it passes to the level of upper border of L5 vertebra. This is L5 vertebra. This is L1 vertebra. This is L5 vertebra. And the plane. So these are two horizontal lines are two horizontal plane and there are two vertical plane. This is this is right lateral this is left lateral plane. This is right lateral. Lateral plane. This is left lateral plane. 
this plane here causes tip of the ninth costocardia meeting wall at point and if you trace upward this is mid clavicular line this is clavicular this is mid clavicular line passes vertically and it here causes the tip of the ninth costocardia and a meeting wall point by these two lines two horizontal and two vertical planes this abdominal cavity is divided into nine regions this region is left this is left hypochondrium this is right hypochondrium this is epigastrium this is epigastrium and here is right lumbar this is right lumbar this is left lumbar and this is umbilical region here umbilicus is present so this is umbilical region and this is a right iliac fossa a right iliac region this is left iliac region and this is hypogastrium this is hypogastrium so these are nine regions now discuss about the position of the stomach here you can see stomach lies here this is position of esophagus and this is position of the stomach so in this diagram you can see the location of the stomach the stomach lies in this region this is epigastrium it lies in left hypochondrium it it lies in umbilical region also here it extends up to umbilical region this is umbilical region epigastrium and left hypochondrium so it is located in these regions its length is maximum its length is about 25 cm and its capacity at the time of birth is about 30 ml at the time of birth 30 ml and at puberty about 1 liter and in adult about 1.5 to 2 liter so this is capacity its shape is it roughly j shaped like this it is j shaped this is j shaped like this in thin individual but in thick or in heavy weighted or in obese person its position is like this it is more horizontal this is known as steer horn stomach this is known as steer horn steer horn type stomach there are two horn like structure so steer horn like stomach so this is all about the first part of the stomach thank you yes now discuss about the second part of the stomach that is external feature of the stomach here in this diagram you can see this is position of the stomach here is esophagus this is stomach this is diaphragm here here is duodenum this is solid broken line 
this is duodenum. You can see the stomach extends from lower end of esophagus to first part of the duodenum. It has two orifices. One orifice is here, and the orifice is here. It has two orifices are two openings it has two curvature it has two surfaces first of all two orifices one orifice is here this is known as cardiac orifice It lies about 2.5 centimeter left to medial plane. This is about 2.5 centimeter left to medial plane here, and at the level of here, this level is level of T11 vertebra. This is level of T11 vertebra. It lies at level of T11 vertebra. At about 2.5 centimeter left to medial plane. This is medial plane. This is cardiac end. Cardiac orifice. Yes. This is cardiac orifice. And another orifice is pyloric orifice. This is pyloric orifice. This orifice lies at level of Jalon vertebra at the level of transpyloric plane. That means Jalon vertebra at the lower border of Jalon vertebra here. And about 1.2 centimeter, 1.2 centimeter right from median plane. This is 1.2 centimeter right from median plane. So. These are two orifices, cardiac orifice and pyloric orifice. It lies at level of T11 and it lies at level of gel one vertebra. And the T. This there are two curvature. This is lesser curvature. This is lesser curvature forms the right border. And here lesser omentum is attached. And here, at the lower end, this point, and angulation is present. This is known as incisora angularis. This is known as incisora incisora angularis. Or angular notch. This is also known as angular notch. This is angular notch. This is angular notch. This is lesser curvature. Another curvature is this is greater curvature. This is greater curvature. Here, another notch is present that is known as cardiac notch. This is cardiac notch. Or angle of his. This is angle of his. A cardiac notch. So along the lesser curvature, there is incisora angularis or angular notch is present here. This is angular notch. And along the greater curvature, here, there is cardiac notch or angle of his is present. This is. There are two surfaces. Anterior surface facing anterior superiorly and posterior surface facing posterior inferiorly. Now we will discuss about the divisions. Here from angular notch from this 
a line drawn from here passes downward and towards the left and it divides the stomach into two parts. This is cardiac part and this is pyloric part. So the stomach is divided into two parts, cardiac part and pyloric part. By this line, which passes from angular notch to greater curvature. Direction is downward and left side. This is cardiac and this is pyloric part. Again, this cardiac part is divided by horizontal line. It passes from this orifice. This horizontal line divides into two parts. This is fundus. Upper part is fundus and lower part is body of the stomach. This is fundus and this is body. And now pyloric part. This pyloric part is divided into two parts by sulcus intermedius. This is sulcus intermedius. It divides into two parts. Pyloric entrum and pyloric canal. This is pyloric entrum and pyloric canal. So pyloric entrum and this is pyloric canal. So it is divided initially into two parts, then again divided into two parts. So there are four parts, fundus, body, pyloric entrum and pyloric canal. And here at the pylorus, at the terminal part, or at the junction of the pyloric and part and the first part of the duodenum, there is a vein is present. This is known as pre-pyloric vein of myo. This is pre-pyloric vein of myo. This is pre-pyloric So this is all about the second part. Now I will discuss about the relations of the stomach. First of all, peritoneal relation. Here you can see this is stomach, this is lesser curvature, this is lesser curvature, this is greater curvature. Along the lesser curvature, lesser momentum is attached. This is lesser momentum. As you see here, it has two layers. It covers the both surface, anterior layer covers anterior surface of the stomach, and post this posterior layer covers posterior surface of the stomach. So this is this is lesser momentum attached along the margin of lateral. Uh, right side, this is lesser curvature, so it is attached with the lesser curvature, this is lesser momentum. And here, after covering on both sides, this attached with the greater curvature here, and it hangs like this this is 
greater momentum. This is lesser momentum attached along the lesser curvature, greater momentum attached along the greater curvature. And here is position of the spleen. This is spleen. So here it is gastro splenic ligament. So this poetidium fold here from the gastro splenic ligament. And here, I reflect on the, or attach on the diaphragm. This is diaphragm. This is gastro phrenic ligament. This is gastro phrenic ligament. So, this is, these are the relations of the stomach, this is peritoneal relation along the lesser curvature, lesser momentum is attached along the greater curvature, greater momentum is attached and also gastro ligament and here at the side of the fundus, gastro ligament. Posteriorly smart area is uncovered, that is lies here on back side, that is bare area of the stomach. Otherwise, all portion of the stomach, all surface anterior and posterior, both surfaces are totally covered by peritoneum, except some part here on posterior side, that is bare area. So, this is peritoneal relation. Thank you. Now, we will see the visceral relation of the stomach. This is position of the stomach. Here, one visceralized, that is, this is position of liver. This is position of the liver. So, stomach is anteriorly covered by liver, diaphragm and anterior abdominal wall. Here lies anterior abdominal wall. So from superficial to deep, anterior, anterior abdominal wall. Then there is costal cartilage here, ribs. Then there is diaphragm. Deep to diaphragm, there is liver. This is liver. So it is related with the liver, diaphragm, and anterior abdominal wall. So this is anterior relation and posterior relation. Posterior relations form the stomach bed. The structures are, if you see, here is. This is position of left kidney. This is left kidney. Here is suprarenal gland. This is left suprarenal gland. Here is position of spleen. This is spleen. And here is position of pancreas. This is pancreas. Here head of pancreas. This is superior surface. This is pancreas. And here is artery. This is splenic artery. And here there is diaphragm and 
here is position of transverse colon this is transverse colon this is transverse colon and here is position of transverse mesio colon this is transverse mesio colon so all these structures form the stomach bed these structures are covered by lesser sac and then over the lesser sac there is stomach so here is position of stomach legs like this this is position of the stomach between stomach and deeper structure there is lesser sac remember lesser sac and the structure forming the stomach bed are the left supraduodenum left kidney splenic artery and pancreas here is transverse colon transverse mesio colon the entry of the transverse colon and this is uh, this spleen actually this spleen lies outside of this this is not included in the stomach bed so this is all about the posterior relation and one important thing if you make in this diagram here is position of transverse colon this is position of the transverse colon and here this is inferior border of the liver here is left costal margin and this is transverse colon the triangle is formed here this is known as gastric triangle this is gastric triangle this triangle is used for feeding tubal feeding a tube is inserted here in case of obstruction of this esophagus esophagus atresia or in case of uh, injury when there is obstruction then a tube is inserted here directly into the stomach and for this this is used as landmark this costal margin this is liver and here is transverse colon and this triangle is gastric triangle Yes. Now we'll discuss about the interior of the stomach. Here, in this diagram, after removing the peritoneal lining, that is serosa, structurally it has four layers. Outermost layer is serosa. Then there is muscular layer. Then submucosa, and innermost layer is mucosa. so if come from innermost to outer side mucosa sub mucosa muscular layer and serosa serosa is peritoneal line here after removing the peritoneal line that is serosa you will find the muscular layer second layer here in stomach three layers of the muscle present outermost layer is longitudinal muscle layer this is longitudinal muscle layer this is outermost layer this is longitudinal arrange muscle layer then next to this the muscles are circular layer this is circular layer and deep to this this is oblique layer
So you can see there are three orientation of the muscle. Superficial is longitudinally oriented. Then medial is circular. Some part is shown here. And deep to this, deep to the circular layer, there is oblique layer. So deepest layer is oblique. Then superficial to this, there is circular. And most superficial is longitudinal layer. After the muscle, submucosa, it has vessels and nerves. Then innermost layer is mucosa. If you cut a section like this and remove the superficial part, it divides into two parts and one part is removed. And this other part you see from inner side. This is interior, inner side of the stomach. You will find there are several folds in the mucosa. The mucosa has several folds irregularly arranged. But in, along the lesser curvature, these are longitudinally arranged. And this arrangement forms the gastric canal. This is gastric canal or Megan This is gastric canal or Megan This is a rapid pathway for swallowed liquid. If you take liquid, it easily passes through this. This is rapid, rapid pathway for the passing of the liquid. This is the commonest site of the peptic ulcer. This is commonest site of the peptic ulcer. And other side, the folds are irregularly arranged and these folds are known as ryugi. These folds are known as ryugi. Here is longitudinal ryugi. Here is transverse or oblique various types of the pattern here you can see and another thing there are numerous small pits if you see under the hand lens you will find there are small pits these pits are gastric pits gastric glands open through this these pits in the stomach. So a special feature after opening this you will find the gastric canal along the lesser curvature. These are longitudinal folds. Here longitudinal folds are of mucosa is present, longitudinal ryugi are present and under side there are irregular ryugi are present and here another thing is presence of gastric pits. So this is all about the interior of the stomach. Thank you. Yes, now we'll discuss about the arterial supply of the stomach. The stomach develops from the embryonic foregut and artery of the embryonic foregut is celiac trunk. Here is position of the celiac trunk. The celiac trunk gives three branches. One branch is left gastric artery. This is left gastric artery. And there is the splenic artery. Here is position of the spleen. This is the splenic artery. Its course is tortuous. So this is the splenic artery. And another artery is common hepatic. This is common hepatic. This common hepatic gives gastroduodenal. This is gastroduodenal. And this gastroduodenal gives right gastroepiploic artery. This is right gastroepiploic artery. And this splenic artery gives left gastroepiploic artery. This is gastroepiploic artery. And also numerous 7 or 8 short gastric artery 
ये तो शॉर्ट गैस्ट्रिक आर्टरी एंड आल्सो हियर दिस दिस इज प्रॉपर हिपैटिक आर्टरी दिस कॉमन हिपैटिक हियर इट बिकम्स प्रॉपर हिपैटिक इट्स गिव्स राइट गैस्ट्रिक आर्टरी दिस इज राइट गैस्ट्रिक आर्टरी तो स्टमक इज सप्लाइड बाय लेफ्ट गैस्ट्रिक आर्टरी राइट गैस्ट्रिक आर्टरी हियर इज Gastrodeuter, it gives us right pancreatic duodenum. Here is, sorry, uh, right uh, gastroepicloid, left gastroepicloid. This is right gastroepicloid. This is left gastroepicloid. And this is a short gastric artery. So these are numerous arteries which give supply to the स्टमक थैंक यू नाउ डिस्कस अबाउट द वीनस ड्रेनेज ऑफ द स्टमक हियर फ्रॉम द स्प्लीन वन बेन पास दैट इज स्प्लीनिक बेन दिस इज स्प्लीनिक बेन इट ज्वाइंस विद द सुपीरियर मेजेट्रिक बेन ये सुपीरियर मेजेट्रिक बेन Both deep these veins join to form portal vein. This is portal vein. So, splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein join to form portal vein. This is portal vein, and this is superior mesenteric vein. This is splenic vein. numerous short gastric veins runs along the gastric artery here these veins dense into the splenic vein here is left gastroepiphyseal vein it drains into the splenic vein here is a right gastroepiphyseal vein this drains into the superior mesenteric vein here is This is left gastric vein drains into portal vein. Here is a right gastric vein which also drains into the portal vein. So left and right gastric vein both drains into portal vein. So this is venous drainage, and here it communicates with the esophageal vein here, left gastric vein, and here is systemic vein of the esophagus. So this is the site of the Porta cable anastomosis. Here is systemic vein, and this is portal vein. Between portal and systemic vein, there is here is anastomosis. This is known as porto systemic anastomosis. In case of obstruction of the this portal vein, the blood passes through this, and here these veins. At the site of anastomosis, we come dilated and form the esophageal varices. This is known as esophageal esophageal varices. So this is all about the venous drainage of the stomach. Just now we'll discuss about the lymphatic drainage of the Here you can see this is here lymph node lies along the splenic vessel. This is pancreatic port. Splenic lymph node. So this much portion 
drains into the pancreatico sclerically floor and this portion drains into here one group of lymph node present along this left gastroepiploic artery this is left gastroepiploic group of lymph node and here is present along the left gastric vessel this is left gastric lymph node here is below the pylorus this is subpyloric lymph node this is subpyloric lymph node and here is hepatic lymph node and another group of lymph node this is celiac group of lymph node this is celiac group of lymph node so lymphatics from this pancreatic spleen goes into this left gastroepiploid from here it goes into subpyloric from subpyloric to hepatic and this area is drains into this is uh, this is left gastric left gastric also drains into the celiac and this celiac ultimately goes into cisterna cavity So this is lymph, lymphatic drainage of the stomach. Thank you. Now we we'll discuss about the nerve supply. The stomach is supplied by sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve. Sympathetic arises from T6 to T10 and passes. Through the greater splenic nerve and gives supply to the stomach. And parasympathetic, there are two vagus, right and left vagus, and here, due to rotation of the stomach, these vagus nerve becomes left vagus nerve become the anterior vagus. This is anterior vagus. This is anterior vagus. It gives numerous branch to fundus body and also here it gives a branch to pyloric antrum and pyloric canal and here you can see this appearance looks like crow feet Something like this, like crow feet. Yes, crow feet. Crow foot. This appearance gives crow foot, and here these branches known as nerve of lateral jet. This is nerve of lateral jet. In case of this is anterior vagal, this is anterior vagal nerve. There is another nerve that is posterior vagal nerve. This is posterior vagal nerve. You can uh, use different color here. This is posterior vagal. This is this is short and it gives sometimes gives a branch to the fundus. This is known as nerve of Gassi. Nerve of Gassi. And it also gives numerous branch. And here it gives a branch, ciliac branch. This is ciliac branch. These branches which give supply to body and pyloric part, this again form the nerve of lateral jet. So there are nerve of lateral jet, the branch of anterior vagal, 
here and also this branch of posterior vagus and posterior side and posterior vagus also gives branch nerve to grassy nerve of the grassy and nerve to ciliac tongue here this is ciliac branch so this is all about the nerve supply of the stomach thank you now we we'll discuss about the development of the stomach the stomach develops from the developing foregut initially it is here is this is developing foregut here is mid gut this is hind gut this part is from here to here this is developing foregut so the stomach develops from this foregut initially its shape is fusiform lies below the diaphragm and shape is like this like fusiform here it has its anterior border on medial plane this is anterior border after some time it rotates about 90 degree like this so this anterior border now become a right border this is anterior border now become a right border and this posterior border is like posteriorly become left border like this and gradually due to differential growth in both these border this border become enlarge and form greater curvature and this border remains small this form the lesser curvature so this is greater curvature this is lesser curvature and as you know here here is position of transverse section during development this is covered by peritoneum this is ventral side this is dorsal side like this and here from this place liver hepatic bud grows and here liver start formation and here is spleen start formation so this is ventral mesogastrium this is dorsal mesogastrium this dorsal mesogastrium is now divided into two part here is position of developing kidney so this part is gastro gastro splenic ligament and this is leno renal ligament this part is leno renal ligament and here from here to here this part become this is lesser omentum and this here there is reflection of peritoneum on the liver here falciform ligament is formed and as you hear steam this rotates about 90 degree from here to here and on structure now become like this stomach liver here right spleen kidney now this 